with Lori's defensive prowess and ability to score herself. It's an impact that's felt on both ends of the court. It's their third trip in four years to the Final Four, and Loris would love nothing more than to finally make it to Championship Saturday. Here in Kansas City, two days away from the national semifinal between the Calvin Knights and the Loris Dulocs, Loris 0-4 all-time in the Final Four, finally looking to make it to the Championship Saturday game. Of course, they have a tough battle. Calvin comes in 24-0-1. It should be quite a game Friday night, 7:30 kickoff. Day one here in Fort Dodge at the Iowa High School Softball State Tournament, KCCI is trying something new. We've taken our GoPro and we're going to mount it inside the dugout to get up close and personal with the player reactions. It's always a thrill for high school baseball players in the state of Iowa to get a chance to play at Principal Park here at the state tournament. Class 2A action resumed today. And they're back in action right now in the AWC. Joel Schmidt is there. Joel, what's going on, my man? Thanks, guys. It's the Dutch and the Duox doing battle here in the Athletic and Wanda Center. The women, the women will tip off in just a couple moments. It's the second to last day of the regular season, so let's take a look at the conference standings. On the women's side, the women, the Duox, did second, tied for second with Buena Vista, looking for a win tonight to help secure that second seed in the first round by in the conference tournament next week. Meanwhile, on the men's side, they also sit tied with Simpson. And they'll host Simpson on Saturday to conclude the regular season and celebrate Senior Day. One of the seniors you guys talked about at the beginning of the show, Mirko Gertrude, joining the 1,000-point club. He'll be formally recognized before the tip of the men's game tonight. Meanwhile, Kaitlin Phillips enters this game just eight points away from joining the club on the women's side. She'll be the ninth member of that club. The game will tip off in just a couple of moments. Reporting live, Joel Schmidt, back to you guys. One of the big forces behind Duhok's women basketball is making an impact as large as her height. There's no mistaking the six foot two defensive force for the Duhawks. Being tall helps, but I don't think it's, that's everything. With 71 blocks in 23 games, Lori certainly makes it hard for the opposition to drive into the paint. But he has a role on the team, and it's one of my roles. And you know, even if I'm not blocking shots, I hope that at least people maybe think twice about driving in. What she's gotten really, really good at is uh, a lot of people, as, as they're absorbing contact, um, you know, they get hit and their hands go down, and Lori doesn't do that. Lori gets hit and her hands stay up. If you try to block every shot that comes, you're going to fall out. So it's more so just letting them play into your hands. Lori's consistent technique has allowed Boris opportunities on the other end of the court. I've, I've learned a lot about how aggressive to be. Her getting a block is, allows us to get out in transition. With Lori's defensive prowess and ability to score herself, it's an impact that's felt on both ends of the court. I wouldn't say I'm the kind of person that's like dying to get the ball, <laughs> but when I do get it, I will try and make a move and score. But a lot of times it's, it's offensive rebounds, it's my teammates dumping down to me. You know, a lot of it isn't as much creating for myself as it is my teammates creating for me. Reporting for Sports Zone, I'm Joel Schmidt. Hooray, it's spring. Joel, it's actually still snowing outside. Okay, well not quite, but with the start of spring training, everyone seems excited for baseball and softball seasons to begin. But what happens when the excitement is quickly buried by the snow that's still falling from the sky? Walking outside every day when you're going to class and you see the snow out there, you're like, you're not getting any closer to being able to play outside. Guys get agitated being in here. Everybody wants to be outside. It's a spring sport. You want to be outside with the, the grass and the fresh air. and it smells good out there and you can feel the breeze and the sun. So, you know, people want to be outside. Practicing indoors doesn't provide the same feeling as outdoors. It's tough, man. It, it's, it's really tough. You know, we play on a hard surface in here. You get different hops off the ball, you know, and the ball, it jumps on you. Sometimes it'll hit a seam and shoot up on you, whereas outside it stays down a lot more on the grass and in the dirt. We have the white backdrop, so it's hard to, like, see, like, a ball when it's coming at you. It's just not a fun place to play. Especially hard for outfield because we do a lot of you know, like throws in the air and everything. It's really hard to replicate that in here because a lot of times we hit the ceiling. It's not the funnest. Uh, softball is made for outside. 
we're supposed to play on grass and dirt, but we play on this pretend floor. I'm not even sure what it's made of. A problem that moves from the gym to the training room. I think it's more of our knees and shins probably hurt a little more running inside just because it's not a real grass or anything like that, and it's kind of a fake court. I mean, it, it takes a toll on guys' bodies, you know? You, know, you see guys coming in early to get some heat or get some ice after practice. We definitely have a lot more time in the athletic training room when we're in here, just because all of the, I mean, running and diving and sliding that we do on this hard ground really takes a toll on our bodies. The toll it takes on the body is worth the light at the end of the tunnel. And every time you see that temperature go up and the snow start to melt, you get that little glimpse of hope and you're, you're ready to go outside and play. Hopefully they're ready to play softball begins their season in Minnesota March 6th while baseball heads south to Florida for doubleheader on March 5th. Welcome to Sports Zone. I'm Ellie Cletta here with Joe Schmidt. While the school year is wrapping up, spring sports are fighting to make sure their season lasts as long as possible. First up, track and field. Spartan Twilight hosted by University of Dubuque women's 100 meter hurdles. Elizabeth Brandenburg with a PR 14.53 takes first. She also PR'd in the pole vault, clearing 3.76 meters, puts her sixth in the country, which was previously tied at 12th. Men's 100 yard dash, Nick Ball finishing first, PRing with an 11.14. Men's 400 yard dash, Josh Gert takes first with a 47.79, a season best for him in an all important qualifying time heading into nationals. It'll just be nice not having to worry about it, not have to run a qualifying time next week. It's like I said, it's just to get it out of the way is really, it's a good feeling. Men's 800, Duox go 1, 2, 3, and 4 as Zach Fry leads the way just under 2 minutes. And in the all-important men's 4x400, Josh Gert anchors the Duox for 3 minutes and 14 seconds, 5th best in the country. Everything was on the line at Mystique Ice Center as it was win or go home in the Eastern Conference Finals. Ice Center was rocking for Game 5, Saints hosting the Skeegan Lumberjacks. Jacks already up 1-0, Max Hummets gets loose puck in the slot, finds the back of the net, Jacks up 2 at the, in the first. Mid-second, Jacks now up 4-1, Saints think they got goal number 2, refs call no goal, slow it down, looks like it might have gone in, tough call, but they play on. The Saints have been a third period team all year, can they complete the comeback? Seamus Malone finds Keegan 4 along the blue line, sends the wrist shot towards the net, Dylan Gambrell with the tip, Saints cut the lead, now just 4-2 Jacks. Three minutes later, defenseman Hayden Shaw, wrist shot from the point. Mitchell Smith with the net front presence. Saints only down one, but they pull the goalie late in the third. Flurry at the end, one last shot. Seamus Malone, Dylan Gambrell, the Jacks hold on. They take this one four to three.